Hey everyone, what I'd like to do in this video is talk about the policy that cryptocurrency exchanges use for listing new coins. This is something that I see being discussed all the time. I think any cryptocurrency that's within its first year or two of existence, they have to deal with exchanges and it can be a major, a major stumbling block in their progress. I've seen a lot of good coins that the project uh, has stumbled because they can't afford the, the listing fee or perhaps they've not been listed on the right exchanges. As an outsider, um, well I guess I'm an, an insider with safe trade, but as an outsider for most exchanges, um, it does seem very inconsistent as to what's happening out there. Um, now, one of the reasons it's been discussed a lot over the last week is that someone shared, um, I think it was an email, an email or something, saying that Binance charges 400 Bitcoin to be listed on, on Binance. Now, they've come out and said that they won't list shit coins, uh, even if one pays 400 or 4,000 BTC. Um, now, I'm not sure if that's the case or not. I'm, I don't want to get into that. But I know that a lot of exchanges that have said um, that they don't list crap coins do list crap coins. Um, and, I, you know, I don't want to call out too many exchanges because, you know, there's so many that do this. But I've seen a lot of um, exchanges that they'll say, oh, we're not going to list that coin yet. And then they'll, they'll list all these new projects, these ones with ICOs that pump and then dump within a few months. Um, you know, look at CryptoBridge, which has the potential to be a very good exchange. But CryptoBridge doesn't seem to have any vetting policy apart from can you pay our listing fee and for a lot of exchanges that's you know that's 100 percent of the vetting uh, procedure can you pay our fee right you're on an exchange um and crypto bridge yes it has some good coins there yes it has the potential to be a good exchange but if you look at the coins that they're listing they're listing coins on day one block one the coins on crypto bridge so there's a lot of exchanges like that where I think that they should wait and wait till a coin is established before it's on an exchange. I think the idea that a coin is on an exchange from block one uh, is very bad. I don't think it's good for cryptocurrency. Now I know from you know working with the Safecoin team and yeah you know seeing the discussions with Safe Trade, I don't really have much input into what happens with Safe Trade other than giving my opinion. Um, but I know that they do have a vetting policy and I do know that they've rejected a lot of coins because it didn't meet certain requirements. And I do think that most exchanges, most good exchanges do have a vetting policy. They look at, you know, what does a coin have? What does it bring to the exchange? Do they bring volume? You know, what's, you know, good? Is it good for the exchange? Is it a good coin and all that? But it does seem to be very inconsistent. I've, you know, I've, I've seen coins that I followed, projects that I followed, and I followed the, the exchange that everyone wanted to get listed on. I followed them on Twitter and they said, no, we've got no plans to accept that. Or they didn't meet all the requirements. And then they keep listing all these scammy coins, you know, all these scum coins, dump, pump and dump coins, Ponzi scheme coins. I don't know. Um, and I do think that I, there's a lot, you know, a lot of these exchanges are saying one thing on their website as far as, yeah, we're transparent. You have to, you know, have all these things. But in the background... Well, it's a very different story. Um, and I don't want to get into specifics, but I think if you hang out in Discords a lot, one of the great thing about hanging out in the, in the Discords, uh, the Discord groups and the Telegram groups of, a, you know, of a coin, you start speaking to developers and you start speaking to the moderators, anyone uh, involved in managing the community, and you hear through the grapevine all the stories of what the team has to go through to actually get listed. And you hear a lot of very dodgy, you know, a lot of dodgy stories arise as far as what they're saying officially. And then in the background, they're saying, no, no, you have to pay as this or you have to pay as this and you have to do this. Um, it's one of those things because I do realize that any good exchange has to have a vetting policy. Um, they have to vet coins. And what I determine or what any, any of us determine to be a good coin, they might disagree and say, well, this one might have been funded with an ICO, but it's a good project. We know we like what they're doing. Fair enough, we can have disagreements with that, but there definitely seems to be an inconsistency as far as what uh, certain exchanges are listing. And at the other end, you've got exchanges that will list any coin as long as you meet their two, five, or 10 Bitcoin listing fee, whatever it may be. Um, for a lot of projects, if you look at it from a, a team's point of view, for a lot of projects, I think that um, 
listing on some of these exchanges is actually detrimental to the progress because they're spending a lot of their funds, either pre-mined funds, ICO funds, or just funds that the community have put together. Um, or even just, sometimes it could just be the money that the developers saved up and they want to get the project going and they've spent this on an exchange. And sometimes a lot of these exchanges that are charging tens of thousands of dollars for a listing, they don't actually have the volume. They don't have the volume of users or they don't, uh, customers. They don't have the customers that trade that much. Um, and there's definitely some exchanges out there. And again, I don't want to name names, um, but there's definitely some exchanges out there that I think are just swindling coins. They're conning them and telling them that they're going to, you know, progress their coin and they're going to get volume and all that when they're not. Now, going back to Binance with the 400 Bitcoin thing, I've, you know, that that was a story that's been, you know, out there over the last week or so. I've heard through the grapevine that they didn't charge that much um, for Zencash and all that. I think they, you know, they actually come out and say that as well. They didn't charge that much. I would say that, you know, personally, I feel that Binance is definitely one of the best exchanges out there, without doubt. Um, so I, I'm, I'm definitely not going to criticize them. I really do like their exchange. But there's a lot of exchanges I don't like. I don't like the inconsistency. Um, and I think that a lot of the exchanges are nothing more than a front to charge teams ridiculous fees to get listed on their exchange. Um, it kind of hit home the other day when I was talking to Levon Simpson from Ether One, and he was talking about they're listed on two exchanges right now, but they were saying, we don't see the benefit of spending extra money right now at this point of the project to, to get listed on these exchanges that charge two, five, 10 Bitcoin, or even more than that. And... I think I think he's right, and I think you know what the team's doing right. I, I do agree with that. I do agree that spend spending tens of thousands of dollars to get listed on a really bad exchange isn't a good investment. It's one of those things because I, I do realize that exchanges, until they reach a certain volume, they don't really make a lot of money, and they do require a lot of work. Certainly, when, from a security point of view and in development, customer support and all that. So there has to be um, there has to be a charge for listing. It's one of the ways that they make money. But I also think it's one of those things, you know, it's a kind of gray area between what do they charge and what if they, what if there's a project that they think is great? Can they, you know, perhaps waive the, their fee to add that coin? Is that fair? Is it fair to, for them to waive the fee for a coin when they're not doing it for other coins? It's one of the, you know, it's one of those things. I, I realize that it's not always black and white. But I don't like the inconsistency uh, of what's happening. I do think that some exchanges are holding teams over the barrel and they're just charging them whatever they want. And I do think that some teams shouldn't be paying those fees and they should be looking at exchanges that perhaps don't charge through the nose and support up and coming exchanges. As I said, you know, with Crypto Bridge, I'm not trying to criticize the exchange itself, I'm, but I am criticizing the policy for accepting new coins. And I don't think any exchange should be listing coins that are like a day or a week old. That's just ridiculous. Do you know what I mean? So um, let me know what you think about this, guys. Let me know what you think about it. It's an interesting topic. It's something that's going to come up time and time again. And, you know, I've had a lot of good discussions recently chatting to some people, uh, really intelligent, really important people from cryptocurrency teams. And it's something I like to continue doing, learn from people that are smarter than me. Um, but I do know that cryptocurrency exchanges is something that's going to come up time and time again. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens over the next year. So thanks for watching, guys. As you guys know, this isn't the end of the video. It's over at you guys now. So please do leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this. And I'll speak to you all in the next one. Take care.